uh like do you like have you have you came to your senses or you know are you, you oh, still no, no, because, okay so would nami be katakuri yeah sure what okay uh, uh, explain to me how okay i got you bro <laughs> <laughs> all right um I'm not gonna use. I, I could use like the the super super edgy stuff, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, so right off the bat, um, we already have a precedent set for how strong like OT is, right? Like OT's headbutts. Now, um, I've already seen your video, um, as well as you saying that it doesn't make sense narratively, which I disagree with because I think scaling represents the narrative of series. Um, and typically the scaling could also coexist with the narrative presented. So, for example. We see several times that OT is able to take the attacks from these Yonko to Admiral level characters, as well as clash with people like Luffy, as well as take multiple other attacks throughout the whole battle on the Odigashima. So and I don't think Katakuri would even be able to scale to any of those attacks. Hey, I have a question. Wait, um, I mean, if DNQ is fine like with other people intercepting, but I'm just... No, 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 yeah. uh, not right now. So let's let's wait till the end and you can ask okay. a question. All right, no, I get, I get what you're saying. Um, do you, do you, do you care for me to like explain even further why I think Katakuri wouldn't be able to take any of these attacks from the Flying Six? Yeah, I do. Okay. Because so. Usopp took a headbutt from Ulti, and yeah. See, the thing is, what, how can, like, I understand how Luffy got more powerful, and that makes sense to me. But Nami and Usopp, what did they do to become more powerful? And how all of a sudden they're outscaling Katakuri? Yeah. So um, do you not think that fights in One Piece can drastically make a character stronger and faster? Definitely. Okay. Well, we know Nami and Usopp, as well as all the Straw Hats, have gotten into multiple fights since Whole Cake Island to get stronger. Oh. There's also an unquantifiable like time frame for the battle or preparation on Onigashima where you could argue narratively would make sense for these characters to brace themselves as well as get stronger and prepare for this battle that's occurring. And then we see verbatim, we see Zoro training, we see Luffy training, and there's actually some missing stuff for the rest of the characters. There's some unquantifiable time. We don't know what they're doing. But even with that alone, we still know characters get stronger through fights, and there's a lot of fights that lead up to it, as well as the narrative literally pushing in the fact like, you know, we're the the crew of the future pirate king. We have to stand up against these levels of the opponents. Um, and then obviously the reason why I don't think Katakuri scales to the flying six or anywhere near these characters is because we see a gear fourth Luffy in Curry Town literally get one shotted by Kaido. So to me, that's literally the narrative and the writing as well as the scaling saying, Yeah, that that hot shit you thought you were on in Whole Cake. It, it's not flying here on in Wano, bro. Like he got piped up and one shot it out of his strongest form. Um, now you could argue like certain things for Snake Man, uh, like Snake Man being maybe portrayed to be a little faster, faster than Gear Fourth. But we know in terms of power alone, Gear Fourth Bow Man is definitely leaning to the fact of being stronger than a Snake Man, or at least that's what their narrative likes to align with, especially with Luffy jumping into this form to fight the strongest beast. So yeah, um, I personally think Katakuri stops right there because we see this same Luffy who just got out of that situation should have got stronger, had his hockey bloom, get dogged by Katak uh, by Kaido and Curry, and then we see a base Luffy and other characters do better against Kaido much later to the point where Kaido's like, yeah, bro, these guys are little monsters. Like, how, how, how did Luffy grow this much? Like, what the, what have you been doing? Like, you've been on LSD or some shit? Like, they're, everybody's surprised that Luffy is getting this strong. And this includes the rest of the crew as well with the statements that are, like, presented in the series and, like, the, the scaling that connects through characters. So, um, I, I can... I don't know how you feel about that before I go into like the whole no no the, no the no narrative with, stuff with, with Katakuri, but with with the Luffy stuff, I I could definitely agree. Um, mm -hmm. like one hundred percent. That's that's something I actually even stated in my video with the Luffy, with the Luffy part. I I definitely see it. I don't disagree with that at all. And that's all one hundred percent. Now, would Katakuri be able to tank one of these attacks? Definitely not. We saw what. What Luffy was able to do to Katakuri, even in base. Were he able to be to dodge some of these attacks? Yes. In you my opinion. Katakuri, you think Katakuri could dodge a Thunderbagua? 
uh, to the extent that Luffy did. Yes. How how would you prove? But that? but again, but be, but but right now we're debating Luffy and Katakuri. Yeah, yeah, this is necessary, there's no there's though. no argument like, there. No, there is no argument there, my friend. You take that. I agree with you. I didn't. No disagree. no 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 no. no. Let's, okay. go to, I, I let's go like to. Let's go to. Wait before before that, I feel like you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I'm saying like the reason why that's necessary is <laughs> I don't think Katakuri is even able to dodge a Thunder Bagua. Which is why I think that all the other straw hats could be argued to be able to dodge the thunder bug what Kaido used before. What on what feet though? No. Okay, yeah. So uh, I'll I'll post it. Scroll down if you want to, so I can demonstrate why. So like, uh, I use. There is okay. no fights. Sorry, there there are no fights at all for the other straw hats. Usopp, who who okay. has he fought? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. Usopp solos. Okay, I'm going to explain this to you, uh, why I think this is the case. So, I showed this to him um, that I used, like, in a couple of debates ago. And, and I'm going to post this bottom scan so you can see both panels. All right, uh, so are we in scans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can look in scans, chat. So, okay. so a, a, lot of, a lot of people, like I mentioned with this whole Red Rock stuff, um, they look at it like, yeah, you know, Luffy is damaging Kaido. He, he hit Kaido or whatever. So I feel like some people might have this way of, or this opinion or this way of thinking because of what this last guy said to me before he changed his mind. Um, but when Kaido actually swings down his, you know, his Bagua or swings down his club at Luffy, I think that attack is faster and stronger or at least at the same level as Thunder Bagua and Curry Town. Do you disagree with that or do you want me to explain why? Uh, the the Ragnarok thing that he did while Luffy yeah, was down. Yeah, okay, yeah. Before before Luffy red rocks Kaido, Kaido tries to slam him with his club. I think that attack is at the same level of speed, at least that Thunder Bog was at in Curry Town. I think he has faster, or he can use different levels of speed. Like he can make his Thunder Bog with faster if he wants to. But I think the regular club attack, the no name attack Kaido used, was fa is just as fast as the Thunder Bog he used in Curry. Do you disagree? Or do you want me to explain why? No, I mean I, I could agree. That's like saying one of Luffy's regular gear second punches would be just as fast as any of them. Yeah, yeah, the and I'm pretty sure you you know um the reason why I'm getting into that and it has to do with the fact of what Kaido says. Like oh, mute thing, here. like yeah, he's like, Yeah, what happened after I destroyed him in Curry? There are only a couple capable of fighting him. Kaido thinks that this regular attack is enough to damage that he saw before and actually hit him. So the fact that Luffy's able to easily dodge and blitz Kaido to the point where he can't react, I think that to me is showing, hey, Luffy in base is way above Gear 4 in Curry Town. And I think that characters in the Straw Hat scale to base Luffy, or in this case for the discussion, Sanji. So that, that's where I would go about proving that Sanji at least has relative speed scale into base Luffy. But what what can you show me that would prove that though? Me, because you're just going. You're, you're, let me, let me get it for you. I, I agree with the Luffy thing. I I agree with the Luffy thing one hundred percent. But okay. this leap that you're making in between Luffy and Sanji, I need a connection. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> so you're familiar with this, right? Um, that I just posted in scan chat. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Yeah, so we know there's different rankings for all the Beast Pirates, and we know that every single level typically represents characters just scaling over each other. So all the All-Stars should be just stronger and faster than the Flying Six. The Flying Six should just be stronger and faster than the normal Gifters, the Numbers, the Headliners, and that's the narrative that is portrayed through us throughout the series. Um, do you know like how Sanji literally encounters Black Maria? And it's to the point where, like, Sanji's like, yo, I don't want to turn on my hockey because if I turn on my hockey, I might actually fuck this bitch up by accident. Mm -hmm. and, and that level of hockey is disgusting because we see characters like Luffy early on in the Katakuri fight try to punch Katakuri and his hands swell up from just how powerful his hockey is to the point where Luffy is getting injured just by touching Katakuri. So... Similar to me, it's literally shown that Sanji is outclassing this member of the Flying Six to the point where the only reason Sanji doesn't want to hurt this person is due to his, you know, his chivalry and his moral code about hidden females. Now, there's that as well as the fact of what Sanji literally does against Queen. And I feel like that's pretty eminent as well.
But I, I feel like these feats alone or the flying six just outscale people like Hawkins as well as outscale people like, you know, or are relative to each other in a sense to where they're on the same level. They're in the sphere of relativity. And we see but, a base Luffy clash with ulti. That's what I'm ahead of this. But here's my disagreement with that, right? Okay. Um, we have Jack, who's an all-star. We have Neku and Inu being able to keep up with him and give him a hard time. And we have Ashura Doji actually scarring and blitzing Jack. Okay. So I think they can just be that strong. What's your issue with that? So, I mean, this is this is Jack in Zo, And then we have Katakuri who outclassed all these people in Whole Cake Island. But now all of a sudden when, people when did, are... When did Jack out... I mean, when did Katakuri outclass Nekomomoshi and all these other people? So, okay. Because there's... I mean, hmm. Okay, I get what you're saying. So let me find a logical... Uh, point here hmm. or we haven't seen jack and these guys fight together but yeah um hmm. they could also have gotten in stronger too because we know that after the whole zao incident and Ka like you know jack falls in the water all that stuff happens he comes back to wano there's also a bunch of time frame that was not accounted for um and to support him getting stronger he also literally uh clashes with like you know What's it called? What's his name? Uh, what was it? Neko in the middle of the town before Kaido comes? Right, but here's the thing. All right, so back to this. So we know that the nine red scabbards together weren't able to do anything to Kaido. Yet I disagree. It... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so all the, like, this, um, do you think, okay, before I dive into this, um, I, I want to set a precedent because, you know, depending on who you're talking to, you always want to clarify this. Do you think that base Kaido is faster than Dragon Kaido? Because I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tiny Kaido is yeah. way oh, faster. Yeah, base. I think base Kaido, just with not even in hybrid, just base, without using his Zoan, is just faster than him in his Zoan. And it's because there's a lot of characters that have feats to Dragon Kaido or him in his Zoan form. And you can argue that's due to the size as well as him being less mobile in this form or technique. Um, which has come, this also is like a detriment to the people that like to like hype up Odin and stuff like that. And you haven't approved that he scales to this lower base Kaido. Um, and that's why I think that the scabbards still are able to react to a Boro breath and all these other attacks that some of the straw hats struggled with reacting to, or the worst generation struggled with reacting to. Like, we know Luffy gets hit with the Boro breath. We know it gets uh, into the point where Law has to room Zoro in the middle of a Boro breath to react to it uh, just in time, which is at, which just credits Law's reaction speed. But the scabbards are able to react to multiple Dragon Kaido attacks. Um, and I think you can argue those Dragon Kaido attacks are still above the Flying Six regardless. So um, the narrative is definitely supporting that. So you're saying that the scabbards are at all-star levels? Yeah, I think the scabbards um, have reaction speed feats. The reason why I would say that the all-stars beat the scabbards is not because of speed, though. It's because some of the scabbards lack the AP and durability feats. Like, what durability does any of the scabbards have that you could really count on besides maybe Kinemon, Ashura Doji, and... Uh, Nekomoshi and all these other people, they have no durability feats. But what we do know is they have multiple reaction speed feats with Dragon Kaido, <laughs> as well as them being able to access durability negation to the point where they can hit him. So I think you can argue they can hack a lot of characters or they can react to characters, but you can't actually prove that the scabbers would be able to take attacks from King, Queen, uh, and Jack, besides maybe Nekomoshi and Ashura Doji, which I feel like are the outliers of the scabbards and the stronger members, um, as well as it kind of being stated or implied. Uh, and then Kinemon is the only person outside of that, because we know Kinemon got stronger uh, from Pound Kazer, Dressrosa, and all the other things. So yeah, I actually think the scabbards are comparable in reaction speed to Dragon Kaido. I'm trying to think of Big Mom, because I can't say that Big Mom has gotten any stronger she's definitely comparable uh to kaido again i could see how luffy has become a lot stronger there there's no questions there but i'm trying to think like sanji 
and uh even page one man like i really see these guys yeah, it also it also happened earlier too like um even like uh before the onigashima raid like uh sanji versus the page fight um sanji the drake stuff and like other things like the whole clashing thing but the thing that goes there where people try to downplay him is like um sanji was literally just to not his raid too that, that's literally all it was like he wasn't even in sanji like really taking it seriously you can credit the the durability though because sanji literally did admit like from kicking him he was like yo this guy's kind of tough like i hit him with the attack he kind of got up but that's not necessarily sanji going all out um, which is Sanji testing, you know, what he's able to do with the suit. That's that's kind of all that happened there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. the narrative is still aligned with, you know, Sanji being able to react and, you know, keep up with these characters as well as clash with them. And you already know how I feel about clashing with characters in One Piece and, like, the different levels of attack that we see presented in the series uh, to make me believe that Katakuri uh, simply wouldn't even be able to touch, uh... you know, <laughs> as well as do anything towards Sanji at all. Like, I don't even think, like, Katakuri could harm Sanji. With, like, maybe if you asked me, like, in Whole Cake, I would have been like, yeah, you know, Katakuri would want, like, beat the shit out of Sanji. Like, duh, he could barely fucking fight Oven and die for you. But if you ask me now, I'm like, okay, well, we have all these things presented that the Straw Hat Pirates are supposed to tee up. They're supposed to be the new Yonko crew. The narrative is portraying that they need to get stronger, um, as well as the feats that are coming out to show us, like, yeah, they, you know, that's why I think Wano, you know, is this new arc as well as the best arc narratively, where it's like, you know, the new generation is here. Like, this is the generation that's supposed to take over the old versus the new Marine four times two, but better. It's you guys finally showing what you have and you putting your hearts out there. So, yeah, the narrative aligns with it as well as the scaling and feats presented in Wano. Um, to make me think that Sanji beats Katakuri based off those things. I mean, I, I definitely do think that they got in stronger, but I look at Whole Cake Island somewhat as a parallel to to Wano in certain aspects and other mm-hmm. aspects they've grown. Um, with 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 Sanji and the rest of the crew, um, uh-huh. I don't. I, I, I just yeah, don't I, I can Toro, I can see Toro I has see, a, I see the place in your heart where I know I know where the contention comes from. Um but that's what I made a video about with fucking I deleted the bitch by accident at like 30k. Um the fucking essentially the reason why a lot of people don't like to accept that is because um people kind of have like this sense of like recency bias, I feel like, as well as looking at it kind of being like well, Katakuri was just a big bad. It doesn't make sense narratively for this character to be introduced that was such an opposition to Luffy and then the other characters to just surpass him like that. But throughout One Piece, we see characters, like I said, get hundreds of times faster, overcome gears, um, become drastically stronger and faster to the point where it reaches stardom. Like, it's just going to be absurd if you think that it can't be very good. I, I, I understand that, but... Uh, here's here's the thing in a way too like i feel that base luffy that was able that's using advanced observation and sit next to kaido i see a mini katakuri in that now when luffy like base luffy now is like katakuri in whole cake island that's that's i don't i don't i don't necessarily see that i get what you're saying in terms of how he's just using advanced observation jumping all over the place and doing this stuff but i don't i don't necessarily see like that if anything i see that for luffy during the beginning of udon because luffy in the beginning of udon literally flexes on katakuri he literally goes to Hagiro the flowers, and we've never seen advanced observation used in this manner. He's literally like, yo, Hagiro, jump three places to the left. Do the hokey pokey. Three seconds from now, you're going to get a bullet in your chest, like junk. And he's like doing all this stuff, and he's flexing his future sight. And that's right. what the narrative is supposed to show us. It's literally telling us, you know, yo, Luffy, this was your gift package from Katakuri. Now you have your future sight down. You acquire that perk. Your future sight doesn't need to be worked on. You need to practice on your advanced arm net hockey. And that's right. what the whole Udon is about. It's literally him punching walls, him training, him getting stronger, faster, more durable because he needs to get past Kaido's skin. And he does. So for me, it's it's not being like, yo, that's like a mini Katakuri. I think he was already at that level during the beginning of Wano. His hockey bloomed. The narrative is over. And that chapter of Katakuri is closed. And the new one is supposed to start. Now, the reason why I brought up like the whole ad absurdum thing is because 
if we just assert that characters just can't surpass them this quickly, it kind of gets absurd where you can catch most One Piece fans in a trap. It's like, okay, um, what's an example? Are we going to say Sanji can't beat Luchi now? Like from Eni's lobby? Like, are we not going to say Sanji wouldn't fold like Luchi? Are we going to say um, Nami? Are we going to say Nami right now in the manga can't beat Arlong? Because Nami would beat the shit out of Arlong with her bare hands and strangle his ass. Like, that's why it's like, how how long are we going to cling on to these characters? You have to wait three arcs to say, yeah, Nami's finally beating Katakuri. That's kind of ridiculous because now you have fans that are saying, yo, Doflamingo right now versus Law. Like, he's fighting Kaido. Like, what, why are we even bringing Doflamingo up? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. When you do I, things I, like that, I feel like it's really redundant, and you could probably see where I'm coming from. It's like no, no, right? If if it's if it's anime only, I could still understand in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For certain people with law, that makes sense. But but I I again, I don't. If you if you were to say law, kid, killer, Zoro, like remember when I had my disagreement with you and Zoro? I didn't know shit back then. Like right? Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't understand, but like for me. And and I understand Sanji would need to prove like for you you have in this perspective you have advanced observation right now because you can see <laughs> where these characters are gonna go based on on what you're scaling right now right but me yeah. being more skeptical right I would really need to see it. like the flying six I feel this yeah. kind of Ibukai they're all stronger than the fodders like that Kaido has but they're not quite all stars or at least not all of them like yeah. for example. Ulti and page one, I feel like they're at the bottom, even though, you know, they're, they're, they're very strong. Because um, you have a Yamato that's right now in hybrid form that's actually going toe-to-toe with Kaido. But this same Yamato is uh, one Yamato's. shot. I mean, but, yes. I'm, but I'm saying, like, like Yamato's, <laughs> like, I feel like Luffy, Yamato, Kaido, Big Mom... And all the people on the rooftop. Yeah, but the scaling, the scaling presented that. That's why I'm not even surprised with the Yamato shit. And I was like, yeah, bro, I kind of called it that because you literally had fucking base Luffy clash with Ulti, and then to get Ulti off of him, Luffy has to use Gear Three. Um, then Yamato pops up and meets Ulti, and one shots Ulti while holding back, and just like, yeah, get the fuck out my face. And then she goes up to the platform. So again, it's like. Yo, these characters are scaling to people who fought base Luffy, where Yamato's looking stronger than base Luffy, and then they get up to the platform, and what happens? Now Yamato's clashed with Kaido. So, hmm, characters that are, are doing base Luffy level shit are competing with Kaido. It, it's like it's literally like shown that it, it happens, and it happened with Yamato, and it would happen with Sanji based off of the same deduction and amount of assumptions, and then you would just, you know, have the most likely one presented right in front of your face that, yeah, if Sanji was to go up there right now, Sanji could clash with him. Sanji would get hit with the Thunder Bagua. I don't think Sanji would severely damage him. He doesn't have advanced armament or anything or any way to prove that, but as of right as of right now, yeah, you could argue Sanji would be able to react or at least move or do something uh, at that level or clash, which is fine. Um, the only problem I can see it's like the whole narrative argument with Vista, uh, the whole Kaido's crew is supposed to rival Big Mom's crew. Um, but I've already talked about that in videos as well as like Discord of why that's kind of like redundant because the Yonkos are meant to rival each other in power. They're meant to be relative. Their crews aren't inherently supposed to be one-to-one ratio because we have crews like Shanks that are disgusting we have crews like Whitebeards, where he has multiple commanders that can rival Admiral and Yonko level characters that are comparable to himself. And then we have crews like Big Moms that are ass. Like, there's like five different commanders that can't contend with Yonko or Admiral level characters. Um, and I think that's fine because let's just say Kaido's Flying Six are all stronger than Katakuri, right? I don't think if Kaido and Big Mom's crew fought, it would be a wipe. And the reason is because you can just argue Big Mom has way more soldiers than Kaido does. You could literally just say Big Mom has Cracker who can make an infinite amount of soldiers that are all geared for Luffy level. So just because somebody has stronger commanders or stronger units, I don't even inherently think that means anything for the Yonko crews because it's like reputation, size, as well as land, and all these things that could lead the narrative of, yo, Yonko crews fight, 
it's going to be a hard battle. It can still be a hard battle, even if Katakuri's getting fucked up by Ulti. Like, I think that's fine. So, I don't really see it that way. Um, and I feel like the narrative is supporting it, like I said, due to the feats and the scaling. And even with Yamato, it happened. And so I was like, okay, you know, bro, I told people, yo, Yamato's going to be the strongest female in the series soon. Like, y'all better, y'all better chill. <laughs> like, I, like, no, I, I definitely agree with, with most, most points, but you're, you're like what I feel like as of right now, just me and my perspective, and I, I can change this, uh, 100%. Is I feel you have a future site kind of knack for these things because this is this is how you analyze series as you go. Um, for me, I don't see Sanji there yet. I see Luffy. I see a bunch of people, and I also feel like we haven't seen enough of um, Big Mom's crew here. We got to see some stuff in Whole Cake Island, but just by like looking at Peril Sparrow and what he's kind of doing, he's showing a lot more strength now than he did back in Whole Cake Island. Amen. Um, the fact that him and, and like, if you put the whole chopper thing against queen, like chopper was literally taking on queen and peril sparrow. Um, but I don't believe that chopper is stronger than queen. And I don't believe that peril sparrow is stronger than Katakuri. You get what I'm saying? Um, like, I don't know. I, I felt, I feel like there's, I still need to see feeds from Sanji. In order to get him there. Like Zoro, if you would have said Zoro, I had no questions. Zoro will one shot Katakuri. Um, but when it comes to like Nami, Usopp, the rest of the Straw Hats, and even Sanji, to me, like they haven't proven themselves yet. To you, maybe yeah. they I, have. I, I, I go, I go at your thing. Um, but it's like, even if they haven't proven to your, like, you know, pro- like you don't think that they're at their level yet, then, like I said, via scaling as well as like the narrative that is aligned side in that, whether it be like your personal bias or the feeling that's like, you know, I want to see Sanji fuck up this guy. It's like, okay, well, it, it's kind of literally just, you know, aligning with the fact that this is the case. Like, for instance, like right now, do you think that if Luffy jumped off, right? Like, let's say Luffy like jumped down from the rooftop during the fight and was to fight Queen, do you think that Luffy would just beat Queen in base? Or do you think Luffy would use gear three punches to beat Queen or go into gear four? Uh, no, I think Luffy can beat Queen in base right now. In base just, right now? Yeah, just because of his advanced... No, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about... Okay, I should have specified because I, I agree to that. I'm more so talking about the Luffy who... Uh, uh, I'm talking about Luffy, that the, the Red Rock Luffy... Or like um, you argue in like the the Luffy that just appeared, and it's because like as he awakens his advanced conquerors, then he got that level of depth as well as uh you know the stronger potency to this ability that he didn't have before. Because I don't think that you could argue Luffy was beating Marco until he had uh, learned advanced uh, conquerors hockey. I feel like Marco would have just stalled Luffy, or Marco would be able to react and at least keep up with Luffy, and Luffy wouldn't be able to get past his regeneration until he right. learned. That. Right, I I agree with that one hundred. Yeah, that's what that's how I feel about it. Because it's like, okay, I think if Sanji and Marco were to fight right now, I think Sanji would be able to clash and keep up with Marco. I don't, I think Marco would beat him. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think that you know Marco isn't winning. It's just that I think Sanji would be able to fight you know Marco similar to King and Queen, like it's presented. Right, but but that's what I'm saying. See, this is kind of how I feel about Katakuri in a way. Marco is a returning guy, so. In a way, you if Marco was way back in, in oh. Marine Board, you know, and we haven't seen him, and we know he hasn't been training for two years, and all of a well, sudden... He, he has. He, he's gotten stronger. Okay, so but I see Marco like somewhat like I would see Katakuri. I see Katakuri got definitely stronger after fighting Luffy as yeah, well. Yeah, I get what you're saying, because like, you, could, you could assert that for anybody, though. You could be like, okay, well, he had hockey blue there. He probably got stronger after the fight, da 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 or the unquantifiable time frame. But I'm saying as of right now, like, do I think Katakuri might come later into the future and be able to keep it with the base Luffy or something? Maybe. Like, who knows, like, what Katakuri does. But as of right now, via scaling as well as everything presented, Katakuri just doesn't scale to anywhere, which is fine. Same, it's the same way I feel about Luchi. Perfect example. I think Luchi, when they literally come back during the war, whatever happens, and they're like, yo, CP Zero's here right now. They're here. I think Luchi's going to come at Luffy and start throwing hands. Like, um, right. But do I think Luffy's like stronger? Probably. He's probably going to be stronger. But I think all these characters that are returning are going to be comparable. 
But for Marco, we have a reason to know why Marco got stronger or why Marco is comparable. Marco literally fought Blackbeard Pirates. He recovered. He got into a fight. He got stronger. He spent all that time protecting that village. Um, and then there's like a bunch of other years and stuff that go by. So, yeah, you know, it makes sense for Marco to become a stronger character and be able to do the things he does versus Katakuri not having that same pull. There's nothing for us to say Katakuri is at that level of, you know, these other characters in the series. Now, whether he comes back at that level, I could care less. But um, as of right now, it's fine. It's the same way I told people about the chopper with Chopper. Like when Chopper slapped Queen, I was telling people, yo, Chopper's stronger than Sanji. And the niggas got mad. They're like, yo, what are you talking about? Chopper's stronger than Sanji. And I was like, okay, well, Chopper has better feats than Sanji at that moment. Do I think Sanji will be strong in a couple of chapters? Sure, that's fine. But as of right now, Chopper's the big dog. Like, he's on top until, you know, we find out, yo, Chopper really can't do anything to Queen. He really just hit him off guard. Then it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, that's fine. But it's just scaling presented. That's the whole purpose for inverse scaling, to, you know, get a purpose or a truth, at least at the moment. So, oh, right. So, <clears throat> I like these conversations with you because then it takes me down a different path. So, like, so thinking about it right now, right? What the story tells us is that some way, somehow, Sanji has always been able to be right there with Zoro or at least one step behind. Do you agree? Sanji was able to be right there with Zoro. Uh, yeah. yeah. Which, is why, which, really which is exactly why, which is exactly why, by the way, I think Sanji fondles Katakuri. And it's right. because I think literally what's what's gonna happen um and it's kind of already happened via the scaling i've I've used is like i think sanji is comparable or at least being able to clash with Sa like zoro right now even if zoro is beating him with things like ashura and other techniques i think sanji could somewhat keep up and literally the narrative pushed that in our face when um niggas were just like yo sanji is in big three there's no monster trio right now fuck sanji and then oda comes out literally and clowns everybody and he's like yo Robin says, yeah, bro, that's the wing of the Pirate King. Like, you guys are stupid. Like, if you think Sanji is in the Monster Trio, you're just dumb. That's, like, that's literally the narrative just calling everybody a dumbass that's downplaying Sanji, so. <laughs> yeah, no, so, so I get, I get, this is what I'm saying. Like, like for you, you can perceive these things. Yeah. And, and for me now, it's like, uh, like, I'm in the middle or the beginning of the scaling thing. So I was like, okay, maybe you can see this. Maybe you're adding these things together. Right now, I cannot... Sanji has not yet proven himself. Am I going <laughs> to will in the next few chapters? Uh, to you, he has. I get it. To you, he has. It's a done deal. But for me, yeah. I, I still... What, I, do you, what do you want Sanji to do to prove he's stronger than Katakuri? Like, you want him to be queen or something? Yes, I want to see a little bit more of him. I want to see, see a feat that gets him closer to Zoro's blocking what? big monster. In Kaido. I mean, you're you're not really no. gonna you're not gonna see anything besides him probably beating Queen and like I don't know like I don't the only the only thing is like if Sanji went up to the fucking rooftop which I don't think would ever happen <laughs> but if it if it does I'll be funny like well here here's here's what I would want from Sanji I want him to beat Queen right that that's yeah. that's that's a huge huge start I'll I'll give him that but not be like really messed up after like i want him to be able to beat queen have some damage obviously queen is not a fodder character okay. but but like still be clean i, like, I feel like that's that. still i feel like i feel like that's still kind of redundant due to queen taking multiple attacks from big mom um not only that but it's like i think marco fondles katakuri like i think marco would run up in whole cake drop kick katakuri through the mirror world and just bang on his shit and just beat his ass like bad versus like you know marco drop kicking king and queen like marco took both of them on but people still don't understand that queen still reacted as well as took multiple attacks from marco marco hasn't incapacitated queen as well as the fact that people ignore that king fell and was off panel for a while Versus Queen being there. Queen was still hanging in there the whole time with Marco. Marco has failed to put down Queen or reach that level two that I was telling you about where you're injuring a character, give them severe injuries or wounds. He has not done that to Queen at all. Nobody has. So for me, if Sanji even damages Queen or just fucks up Queen in any way, that just 
even like even more just separates Cat and Curry for me. It's like, yo, like I don't even think I think right now Marco would just like one shot Cat and Curry. Like, well, as of as of right now, I have the paper on my desk. I'm reading through it. I just haven't given it my seal of approval. I have the stamp in my hand. I'm waiting for that. If that happens, I I agree with you 100. percent I'm just like a little more skeptical. I know I could see it now clearer than I did yesterday. To to be honest with you, but and it makes a lot of sense, especially with Marco being able to take on King and Queen. And now like Sanji's literally doing this in base. Like he's not using. Yeah, it. he didn't put the suit on. Yeah, because people were hating on that. They were like, Yo, what did Sanji do without the suit? Uh, he's gonna need the suit. He's a Power Ranger. Like. Yeah. No, he was doing this shit with Zoro on his shoulders. So I, yeah. I wait. All right, look, look. What did, what did they just say? Did we still mean the fact he's Power Ranger? And they say Power Rangers have these feats in base. It's funny because, like, I don't think people realize that whatever Sanji does in the suit, you can just argue he would get stronger. Like in terms of his base, like it's fine. Yeah. So that that is the one thing I do. I do see it clear now. I just need, I just need Sanji, uh, to to show me yeah. some level feats or something close. Um, Nami versus Ulti, and Nami being able to take on Katakuri. That one, you, that, yeah, that one, I just, I, I, I don't convinced. think Katakuri can take. I don't think Katakuri can take an Ulti headbutt. I think if Ulti headbutt Katakuri, then he's like he's melted, bro. Like he's done. Like it's wrapped. Yeah, you are, you're like dog water Katakuri now instead of dog tooth dog water, bro. <laughs> no. You just I've been saying that for the long because I'm I'm just an advocate. I'm an advocate of just like accepting one piece power clipping because a Look. lot of other one piece YouTubers and people that I've encountered, they don't like accepting power clipping even when it's bladed. And people don't remember like a couple of years ago when what like uh whole cake was just like um it was still in the mist, right? And we were still getting the material. Um people were saying really stupid <laughs> shit like Yo, right now, um, this Luffy after this Katakuri fight, or yeah, bro, what if Doflamingo? You think Doflamingo could like beat him, or he could he could hang with him? I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Like, like <laughs> Doflamingo was a whole arc ago, and Luffy literally got one shotted out of like year four by Katakuri and dogged on to the point where he had to level up. Like, I, I think Luffy at the end of Whole Cake body slams, you know, Doflamingo. Even when Luffy fought Cracker. The whole narrative was like, yo, he's in gear for longer, Cracker stronger, you know, he's like, this is a different Luffy. Like, the narrative has always been telling us that Luffy's going to surpass these guys as well as his rivals and everybody else surpassing them. But yeah, that, that shit blows me. I can't believe people think Doflamingo would beat Law right now. Like, that shit's Look, you're, 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 down, you're downplaying, you're downplaying <laughs> Luffy. CP0 is going to capture these niggas, bro. You're crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, well, I have a question. What's up? Uh, my question is, do you think that Mia can defeat Shanks? Yeah. I, I mean, I could take either. Like, in a debate, I'll take either side, but I think Mihawk wins. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, yeah, it's the same way, though. I saw somebody in chat said, I, I don't think Roger's top three. I don't know how Roger could be top three when there's, like, four niggas or five niggas equal to him. I'm sorry, like... <laughs> I know, like, he, he's, he's tied for top five. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. You think so? Nah, he's tied Roger, for, what are you talking about? He's tied for top one, Roger, dumbass. Roger equals nah, Dark equals seven. Sengoku equals, um, equals Whitebeard equals Roger seven. equals Shiki. Like, wow. Well, yeah, that's, that's tied for top one. Like, What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, this guy's 